Welcome to The Geek in Review, the podcast focused on innovative and creative ideas in the legal profession. I'm Marlene Gaybauer. And I'm Greg Lambert. And we are wrapping up at uh, Legal Week. And uh, we, we literally grabbed uh, Joshua Lennon from Clio to come sit down with us. Of course, uh, uh, longtime listeners may remember that... Uh, you guys are collaborators. We collaborated on the... Uh, uh, Superhuman Super Law, Law mm -hmm. uh, podcast mm -hmm. and uh, the fun times. That was, that was I think good. that sticker's probably worth money now. It, it is. I, I still have a handful of. I have the poster. Yeah. I have the poster hanging in my office. So, mm. uh, so Joshua, welcome to the Geek and Review. Thanks. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm Joshua Lennon. I'm the lawyer in residence at Clio. So I have the the most made up title in legal technology. <laughs> well done, thank well you. Done. <laughs> Paid more in the length of title than in uh, than in salary. Uh, <laughs> it might it might be a tie yeah, at this point. All right. yeah. so, but I've been there a while. Good, good, I think good. you were just telling us before we went on air that uh, you recently released it was a mid mid sized firm survey. Was that yeah, right? it's it's not a survey. So Clio does an annual report called the Legal Trends Report, and it's actually based on the aggregated anonymous usage data of Clio, the software we build and is used by law firms. So it's tens of thousands of law firms all contributing, not their client files, not, not their communications, but really just how they're logging in, where are they practicing from, what types of features are they using. Uh, and we've been publishing that since 2016. Uh, we recently noticed that we actually are the most widely used practice management solution for mid-sized law firms. About one in eight mid-sized law firms in the United States is using Clio right now. Yeah. And so... Just so we know, how, how do you define what a mid-size is? 20 plus lawyers. Okay. Uh, and then we tr it tops out around 200 for our analysis. Okay. Yeah. Um, so so it, it can be, I mean, 200 is... It's a big firm. Yeah, that's, yeah. A big firm. That's, a, that's a range. That's, yeah. that's a pretty big range. All right. So uh, what did you find? Well, there was actually some really interesting uh, information. So for our just industry-wide report that we issued last October, we started uh, taking a look back on the past eight years of data that we've published, and we looked at the uh, productivity gains that we've seen within law firms. Uh, for example, we saw a 25% increase in the amount of cases that are being handled by Timekeeper, uh, also a 35% increase in the number of billable hours recorded over the last eight years. And then a ridiculous jump in revenue. It was actually um, almost 170% jump in hours billed and amounts collected. When we then applied that same analysis to the mid-sized law firm, we, we actually saw some weird discrepancies. When we were looking at it by timekeeper, um, the number, the increase in matters, which was around, again, 25%, for the just everybody together, it's only one point two percent for mid-sized law firms, and that just yeah, Greg's making uh, uh, a face yeah. and raising his <laughs> eyebrow for for the listeners at home. Uh, we're yeah, like, no, we're that can't be right. That we're not. That can't be right at all. <laughs> so we're like, okay, we're obviously looking at the wrong metric here, or we need to parse it a little further. So rather than looking at active timekeeper, we decided to break it down and see, is there a difference in the, the amount of lawyer to non-lawyer timekeepers that are working on a case? And for smaller law firms, it's roughly around 30% of timekeepers and non-lawyers. For mid-sized law firms, it was closer to 48%. But what was even more interesting, and you'll need to read the report to see this is that actual percentage is, is much more volatile. And so it's not 48% all the time, but it, it drops down to 45, it goes up to 49 um, over the course of those eight years. And what we think we're seeing is that these mid-sized law firms are actually keeping a very consistent amount of workload per lawyer. But then when times get busy, they're adding paralegals, legal secretaries, and they're recording more time and doing more work. And then when things slow down, then we see, again, that ratio drops. So when we then narrowed our research to looking at responsible attorney, which is a field in Clio, every, every matter in Clio has a responsible attorney, um, which in a mid-sized law firm is probably going to be your lead attorney, maybe your, your practice group lead or the originating attorney. Um, but they'll have multiple timekeepers on it. And in smaller firms, it's probably just the attorney working the file. Uh, 
Uh, and when we limited the research to um, just responsible attorney, then we actually saw a difference. We saw that small firms have seen an 8% gain in matters over the last eight years. Mid-sized law firms jumped up to 7% when we look at responsible attorney, but they're still lagging behind small firms when it comes to matter creation. And that was really interesting. I'm curious when the survey comes out mm -hmm. and you know, your clients are looking at this, you know, what types of comments do they have? And actually, you know, what do you know, what actions do they take based on uh, the data that, that is there? That's actually a really great question. So I, yeah. I spoke Thanks. at, <laughs> uh, I spoke here at Legal Week with one of our customers. Uh, her name is Angela Lennon, no relation. Uh, and she's from a mid-sized law firm called Koenig Dunn. And they focus on um, divorce and they're based out of Omaha, Nebraska. They're a mid-sized law firm. And they've actually been looking at the legal trends data over the last several years and actually taking some really concrete steps with their law firms. Um, and, and what's interesting is it correlates to some of the things that we found in this year's report as well. Um, one of the big differences in mid-sized law firms is they have a much higher utilization rate. They're able to, on average, bill about half of their day, around 48% of their day. In smaller law firms, it's down in the 30% percentile. Um, but... Uh, when we look at mid-sized law firms, they're much more likely to give themselves a haircut at what we call the realization rate, which is the number of recorded billable hours that actually end up on the bill. They're much more likely to reduce the amount that ends up on the bill. And we're definitely seeing a big difference emerge in collection rates for mid-sized law firms. We're estimating, because not all of December 2023 bills have been paid yet, but we're estimating for 2023, mid-sized law firms are only going to have a collection rate of 83%. How do you calculate and balance the, the bill time versus like a flat rate? Because I know like... That's actually, yeah, that's really tricky. Uh, we actually do have to filter out flat rates. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but something like 90% of all matters recorded in Clio are hourly. And so it really is a, a relatively small amount of data that gets filtered out. Uh, and so all of these numbers that I'm talking about are, are strictly looking at hourly right now. Uh, we are digging into flat fees, but that's not a part of these numbers. Yeah. Do you have and, any, do you have any clients that are uh, subscri subscription based? We do have customers who are offering subscription based uh, legal services to their clients. Mm -hmm. And that's a really interesting model as well. Uh, and what's made that possible, and I'm just going to do a, a call back to Angela Lennon, is they're taking advantage of new emerging fintech options for law firms. So financial technology, like online payments, e-checks, uh, tap to pay on mobile phones, um, the ability for clients to pay using their Apple wallet or their Google wallet. Um, all of these different ways now that financial technology is integrating into the consumer experience. Um, what we've seen with subscription law firms and firms like Angela Lennon's is that they are leaning into these types of payment avenues and they're seeing their collection rate just soar. So Angela uh, told the audience in our talk that her collection rate for her firm is in the high 90 percentiles. So, so I think she said 98%. Yeah, yeah, convenience really is king. The other thing that they're doing that helps with that as well is they also use those payment options and accept advanced fee deposits into trust. And uh, our own research has shown that when you're doing that, uh, it actually increases not just your collection rate, but the firm's realization rate. The they're less there. likely to give themselves that haircut because <laughs> exactly. they know the money's there. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, and so, uh, but interestingly, we don't see client pushback on that when that realization rate is higher. So they get a larger bill and they're paying a larger percentage of their total bills, right? But there's not seemingly no backlash. Yeah. Imagine it's agreed upon number and it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And they, you know, they, uh, the client plans it in. Yeah. And so, so mid-sized law firms and they're, they're actually a much smaller percentage of, law firms in general, leaning into this financial technology. But in our own data, the ones that are leaning into financial technology and, and client experience and consumer convenience, they're actually getting paid twice as fast. Yeah. 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 Time, time on recovery is uh, uh, 
uh, very important. Are are you guys building some of these? Or are you enabling the fintech? In yeah, actually, we, we've actually built our own payment processing solution. Mm-hmm. Uh, we call it Clio Payments. And it, it does a lot of the things that I've talked about, like yeah. accept fees into, into trust. Um, interestingly, uh, we also have a mobile app for clients. And um, when mid-sized law firms are using that app with their clients, so there's an app for lawyers and there's an app for clients, we find that they're getting paid faster too. And they're even seeing a decrease in their collection lockup, which is the amount of money that's been billed, but just is locked away in somebody else's bank account. Yeah. Uh, And so we didn't expect a client mobile app to improve the the speed of of client payment and collections, but it really did. It it drops. uh, It was the most significant decrease in lockup for mid-sized law firms. Yeah. So there's a lot to unpack, uh, not just in in our general legal trend support, but then when you break it down by firm segment. So this is really exciting for us. We're going to be doing a solo version later this year as well, uh, taking a look at, again, some of these similar uh, similar pieces of information. But now, how is it different for a solo law firm? Would you say there are any lessons to be learned for uh, large law based on based on the, the results? Uh, I think large law actually is looking at small law and taking a lot of the lessons. When we read um, uh, other research into like the Law 100 and the amount that they're announcing that they're going to invest in technology, right? They're easily eclipsing what's being spent by mid-sized law firms right now per lawyer, right? Uh, and... When we look at, again, solo and small law firms, we see that they are much more likely to leverage all of the features of the technology they have in Clio rather than just a portion of it. And so I think we're seeing kind of the middle child of mid-sized law firms right, who are successful. There's no doubt about it, right? Their revenue has gone up significantly over the last number of years, but it's not, they're not as good as they can be because they're not leveraging technology like these smaller law firms to its maximum potential. And they're not investing in technology like these big uh, law law firms. And so the question is going to be is, is how long can that continue? Yeah. Well, I noticed uh, that unlike a lot of companies out on the, on the floor, you did not change your name to Clio.ai this year. No, no, no. we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no. Seems to be a trend. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, I know that you are – looking at integrating AI tools. Of course, AI itself, not new. Yeah. Uh, the generative AI is kind of what everyone's thinking about now. So what, when people stop by your booth, what are, what are you showing them that's on the horizon or available so now? So we are building our own in-house AI tool. We're calling it Clio Duo. And it's going to be a chat-based interface allowing a law firm to explore their own firm data. So rather than it being... Uh, chat GPT where you can just ask it anything, right? And then it comes back with these hallucinated answers. It is going to be a chat-based interface, but instead it will look for answers within your own law firm data and try and raise things from that. So it could be that you ask it a question like, hey, what was that address that my client lived at three years ago? And because you have their, their documents loaded in, right? It can go, oh, here's a document from three years ago with your client and an address, is this the one you want? Um, You can also ask it about firm performance. Like, how many hours did my paralegal bill this month? What's our utilization rate for the firm? And it can give you that type of information back. And as we we learn more about what law lawyers want from that type of chat-based interface, then we're gonna take a look at potentially suggestions, right? So, when somebody uploads, say, uh, a tranche of discovery, right? Uh, the AI might recommend, hey, do you want me to go in and bait stamp some of these documents? Or uh, do you want me to potentially draft like responses based on the information that we already have? Like, what was that client's address from three years ago, right? If that's a question, it can surface that data for you. Um, and I'm, I think, really excited about that as our future functionality. Because I think that's where we really start to leapfrog 
into massive productivity gains to the benefit of the lawyer and the client. So it's not taking work away from the lawyer. It's taking drudgery away from the lawyer so that they can work. So I was curious. It's like, how are you addressing uh, client security concerns about a, a, a tool yeah, like that? Yeah, so that's actually a really great question. The issues with it have to – part. it's part technical. And I'm a lawyer. That's lawyer in residence. <laughs> so I will badly explain the technical concepts to the best of my lay understanding. Uh, but there's also contractual. Mm -hmm. And that's always been the case with legal technology is you need to rely on both – contractual and technological constraints on your vendors in order to protect client confidentiality. So in the model that we're looking at, there's basically uh, two portions that are very important for it to function. There's the LLM, the large language model, right? And that is really based on uh, a wider set of data, mostly done by these AI companies, right? They scrape the web. And from that, they build these predictive models on how to answer questions, how to converse in that chat-like format, right? And potentially, what type of words string together well, whether or not they're true, is outside the bounds of the LLM. And then on the other side, you have what, uh, what the AI people are calling the corpus, which is the body of knowledge that you can direct that LLM at and say, when you answer the question, it has to be from this corpus. And for Clio's uh, AI tool, Clio Duo, the corpus will be the customer's files themselves. And so the only people looking at that are going to be the lawyer and their clients uh, and the LLM processing it on behalf of them both, right? It's a directed tool. It's not something that Clio is doing in the background all the time. Uh, and so it's just like the search uh, field in any practice management, right? Uh, I want to look up John Smith. Show me John Smith. That's a processing. It doesn't change the data. It doesn't extract it to be used by another firm. It just finds John Smith for you. And here uh, we actually see the Clio Duo AI tool working very much in that same way. Look at my data, do something with it, but only for me and my client. So... Crystal ball question. Time? Yes, crystal ball. Ooh, crystal ball. Yeah. So uh, I, I think you know the uh, the drill here. Mm -hmm. um, so peer into your crystal ball for us, and uh, over the next two to five years, mm -hmm. what are you seeing as a as a change or challenge that people should be aware of? I think a lot of AI is going to be limited by the Microsoft Word interface. Mm, explain that. So. Uh, Anyone who has practiced law or You're going to use it through the Microsoft interface. <laughs> yeah, is that you spend the majority of your time creating documents and the most widely spread word processing tool by far is Microsoft Word. Um, I'm old school. I, I still have a preference for WordPerfect. <laughs> I don't use it because nobody else does either, right? And so the need for lawyers to have those productivity gains from AI will most often then go into Microsoft Word. Find that client's address from three years ago, right? Okay, so now I put it in the, the, an answer to an interrogatory that I'm, I've been drafting. Or now I put it in as part of a fact pattern in a pleading. Or now I'm putting that in as proof of an alibi from a crime three years ago, right? But most of those things are going to be done in Microsoft Word, and there's only so much we can cram in there. So at some point, um, we're going to have to wrestle with the fact that Microsoft Word is limiting productivity for lawyers. And what comes next is going to be, I think, just a game changer. It's, it's almost unfathomable to, to see the shift from this blank page that we're so used to staring at on our screen to something that's much more interactive, something that's guided something that enables you to have multiple data sources open at the same time in a user-friendly way, um, such that we're not just scrolling the infinite white page of Microsoft Word. Yeah. So that's my crystal ball. Microsoft right. Word's in the crosshairs. Well, I, I, the thing that immediately popped in my head is, uh, is Clippy going to be the new co-pilot? I know, right? I, I think 
I, it makes sense clip, to me. Clip, clip, we saw the meme. Clippy yeah. is my co-pilot. Yeah. It, it's so bizarre that it's coming <laughs> back around again, right? Yeah. Uh, the universally reviled, hey, it looks like you're drafting a letter. Do you want me to help you? Yeah. Yeah, but now we might actually have a tool that can help us. Mm-hmm. So do we bring back Clippy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Question pro, of the I'm day. I'm pro Clippy. I'm pro. Yeah. I, me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, I think the user experience was poor. I don't, I don't need a mascot. I always yeah. like them. No. no, okay. So <laughs> I like when you We can agree clips. to disagree. <laughs> I know, I know. It was yeah. fun. It was fun. Uh, well, Josh Lennon from uh, from uh, Clio, thank you very much for uh, you know letting us grab you right off the street and sitting oh, yeah. you down in, in front of the mic. Yeah, I just came by to say hi, but this has been a great conversation. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, be careful what you do. Go see? get on punishment. We'll put you on air. And of course, thanks to all of you, our listeners, for taking the time to listen to the Geek and Review podcast. If you enjoyed the show, share it with a colleague. We'd love to hear from you, so reach out to us on social media. I can be found on LinkedIn or on X at, at GabeBauerM and on threads at, at, Gabe, at, at MGabeBauer66. And I can be reached on LinkedIn or you can go to X, which uh, we were talking about getting less and less on there. But I am there. You can reach me at Glambert. Uh, so, Joshua, if someone wants to learn more about Clio or reach out to you, what's the best way? Uh, great. I'm on LinkedIn as well, Joshua Lennon, L-E-N-O-N. Uh, I'm actually trying out a new social media site called Blue Sky. Um, yes, So, again, under it. Joshua Lennon there as well. Um, and if they want to learn more about Clio and the legal trends report for mid-sized law firms, please go by Clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com forward slash enterprise. And that'll take them right to our uh, our we actually have a mini site now focusing on mid-sized law firms and all the great resources that we can provide them as a software company, but also these free reports like the Legal Trends Report. Very cool. And as always, the music you hear is from Jerry David DeSicca. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. All right. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.